coffee club, coffee club. Grind your beans and grab your favorite mug. It's Ali Morgan, George and Gus. It's them boys from coffee club. Boys from coffee club. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Coffee Club podcast for episode 133. This is Morgan coming to you from Sydney, Australia, and I just wanted to brief you guys because we're going to have a little change up with this episode and the next one just from our normal routine. This episode today will be kind of a mini episode with Ollie and I doing a race recap on our recent performances at the Australian National Championships, and then next week, George is going to step in and he's going to do an interview. I'm not going to spoil who it's going to be with, but I think you guys are going to absolutely love it. So yeah, that's just due to some unforeseen scheduling changes. So we're changing up a little bit, but I hope that you guys really enjoy it. And then before we get into today's episode, I do have a couple of quick shout outs. First off, happy three year anniversary to Will Bryant from your girlfriend, Kelly. I am so grateful to have you in my life. You're a positive impact on every community you're a part of. Will is one of the biggest coffee club fans, which by proxy means I'm a regular listener as well. So I'd like to apologize to the boys for making a counterfeit sticker of your logo as a gift for him a while ago. In my defense, the official ones hadn't been released yet, which I guess technically they still haven't. That's how bad. Anyways, happy three years and shout out to all the running wives, husbands, and partners who now have an extensive knowledge of running celebrities. Kelly, thank you so much for the message and big shout out to Will. Thank you so much for being a fan and for forcing your girlfriend to listen to us. I hope it isn't too painful. And just thinking about the topic of counterfeit merchandise, I'm 100% for it. So go crazy. No need to apologize for that one. And finally, one other shout out coming in from Julia. This one goes out to David. Happy birthday, David Long in Durham, North Carolina. We hear it as a big one. Hoping you have a great year. Gus sends his best too. And that's from all the boys. Shout out to David. I don't know exactly what age he's turning this year, but I've heard he's on the older side, so... Uh, we got to give him so much love. We absolutely love and appreciate our older running fans that listen to us. It's it's actually really hilarious. Every every time we have someone come and tell us they listen to the podcast and they're, you know, they have their children with them or they're a bit older, it's like, wow, that's that's crazy to think that people older than us are listening to the podcast. You guys must think that we're absolute idiots. But no, we appreciate the love so much. And um, David, I believe his birthday is on the 25th of April. We hope that you have an amazing day and enjoy it. And that came in from Julia and also your daughter, Anna, I believe. So, yeah, cool. We don't really do shout-outs too much, but we just had a couple of uh, kind of sweet ones to do this week, so I thought I'd chuck them in here. But with those out of the way, I guess it's time to get into it. I hope that you guys enjoy the convo between Ollie and myself. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Have fun. And we are here, still down under. This is Morgan. Coming to you from his home in Randwick, Sydney, Randwick. Australia, New South Wales, Australia, and joined by Mr. Oliver Hall coming in from the Whorehouse. The Whorehouse, that's right, in uh, the Sutherland Shire. So <laughs> we're back. We're back home for a little short time, which has been nice. We spent a lot of that time in Adelaide, and now we get to reconnect a little bit at home. A bit of nostalgia after a national yeah. championship. Yeah, nice. you're well, I'm just. Yeah, I'm just oh, looking yeah. at the wall behind you, talking yeah. of nostalgia, man. That's just stacking up back there. That's uh, awesome. My parents, my parents are too proud. So, and so those, you look like you're in the jungle right now. Yeah, no, this is my room as well. Yeah, <laughs> this is this is where I sleep. Yeah, you sleep uh, outside. For those who aren't watching the video version, Ollie has his old Australian singlets and. Uh, like pictures of him winning Com Games Gold, I think, and they just look so nice. They're like perfectly framed, and with the, did, wow, that's the, the job well done. That's amazing. Shout out to Greggy for doing that. My dad, he wanted to put it up and frame it and everything. So, hey, deservedly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so, <laughs> with so, that, let's, let's yeah, go. shall we? Yeah, let's so, go. We're not gonna we're not gonna take up too much of your time. This is just short little recap of the race coming in hot uh, after this past weekend, and coming coming back from Adelaide with a couple of silvers, a couple of second places, or as Dathan likes to call it, first place loser. First place loser. Yeah, that's what Dathan <laughs> mentioned to both of us after the race. I'm not sure yeah. if Morgan and I are still on the team, so we'll find out when we get back if he's taken our lockers away. But 
you know, because we all those losers. Don't, don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> can't yeah. set off lights for us. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. Dathan, Dathan was very happy. Everyone, everyone across the board was happy. I think for both yeah. of us, we clearly went there to try and win. So not achieving that goal stings a little for a little bit, but I think in the grander scheme of things, a second place in both those races was a really good showing and puts us both in pretty good positions going forward. So just generally, yeah, happy. Mm. My, my brother, you would have loved it. My brother was roasting me yesterday. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He came in, this is Taylor. He came in and he had like a sincere, like, oh, nice race, man. That was tough. And uh, and then he was just like, so did that race go how how you wanted it? Was that how you how you wanted it to play out? <laughs> he was just roasting me about oh, it. That's so, so funny. Good. I mean, my brother oh. didn't even watch it. What? Because he made a mistake. So he had him and his fifteen mates um, all turned up at the house, drinking beers, getting excited for it, and then they all their phones start lighting up, and they asking all these questions about like. Oh, that's pretty good. Like that'll put him in a good spot for for the Olympics, and, like making the Olympic team and, and things like that. And I was like, "What the hell are you guys talking about?" It's like apparently it's already been happening racing. And then he no. realized he clicked on day two, so he was watching the day yesterday's coverage and not the live coverage. So he missed the uh, race. <laughs> he was watching the replay. So he missed the whole race, and he invited all his mates over, and they all drink, and he missed the whole race. But uh, it was pretty funny. He was telling me about that, <laughs> and he was pretty excited. But um, yeah, so classic. Yeah, oh, classic. that's amazing. Classic that's Chris. amazing. Yeah, that's what happens when you have a few beers. You forget what you're watching. Yeah. Anything can happen. Yeah. Anything can exactly. Happen. So there was a ton of good athletics, but just focusing on, mm. on our races. Ollie, you want to go first just as you sure. were? You competed yeah. first, the big Saturday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and uh, a lot of lot of hype on the 15 for sure. Like, man, the field's probably the deepest field ever in Australia. And uh, definitely coming back as my – this would have been my second race in 10 months. It was it – was, I was actually stressing out. Yeah. Um, I um I was also very really nervous. nervous. Yeah, think, and, yeah, yeah. It's just a lot of I pressure, think, I think, because it's yeah. like it is when you look at like the way the season is in Australia, and it makes sense that the nationals would be now in April because it goes into the winter uh, here. But like everybody else, would be getting prepared and ready in June, like June, pretty much um, for their trials or their national championships. So it's a bit difficult for a lot of Aussie athletes because they want to make sure that they can obviously progress from their training and fitness into June and August when the Olympics are, because that's where you want to obviously be at the best shape physically and mentally. But this race is a, is a big deal for us in, in April. And a lot of us like Morgan and I will, will go and race on like bigger races, like big races, not bigger races, but big races moving forward. So it is a weird time, a lot of nerves, but it was uh, definitely exciting. I think, um, and yeah, the field was crazy. Uh, so many talented guys out there. So it's going to be a very competitive race. Um, the conditions were a little windy, um, but it was sunny and I uh, had a great turnout uh, at the at the champs. And with the race, like my race plan was to pretty much, I, I thought that, I mean, Stewie McSwain, people know how he races. He races with no fear, goes to the front and just tries to like just crush the rest of the competition. And particularly from how I saw Stewie in the heats and how he ran the heats, I thought, man, this guy's going to go and just like run something crazy. I just got to be ready to hurt and ready to like get on the um, on the train. Anyway, so like I got a good decent start, went to the front <clears throat> and I was kind of waiting for Stewie because I thought he was going to come around and, and, and speed this up. Because for me, like tactically, um, if it's a slower race, it's okay because I think I have a little bit of a kick, even though, you know, obviously just coming back from from uh, from the in- like the injury, like uh from like november when i had the stress reaction so like i haven't done too much track but i've done like enough to be able to be competitive with these boys so i was excited about it and then Stewie went to the front but he wasn't able to squeeze it as much as he usually does um i think he was struggling a little bit well Um, that was probably in part because of the conditions as well it was was very windy Windy, the wind made it well in part the conditions like the wind made it more difficult to run at the front but in reality, even if it was perfect conditions with the talent of that field, running away from you guys was going to be close to impossible anyway, doing Almost, it solo. Yeah, definitely without a pacer. Um, so he took the lead and then uh, Cameron Myers kind of kept me really close to the rail. <laughs> I was pretty scared at some points that I was going to hit hit the rail and go over, but I was able to keep my composure and, uh, and stay there and I was kind of a bit stuck. Um, I was hoping that I would find a gap to get out, um, to move around. Uh, this because is the last I was, lap. This is the last lap when I come through. And that was like, I'm like, okay, don't panic. There will be a gap. There will be a gap. 
Um, and I was actually worried about Cameron Myers because he's been getting a lot of attention. He's got a really fast uh, kick. Um, and I know a couple of other boys were going to still be there. They're going to be aggressive with the kick. And obviously, if Shui can, can hold his form, uh, it was going to be a, a dogfight to the finish. And uh, yeah, I was I was struggling to see if I could find a place. And I think around 150 to go, um, I see Adam Spencer just come straight around and just start flying. And uh, the rest of the field started to break up. So I was able to get out and go around. And then, um, yeah, it was just, just to stay relaxed and just keep trying to mow him down. But you know, Adam Spencer's Adam Spencer, man. He's pretty freaking good. And uh, Mick Byrne did very well. Um, we, were, we were getting close to him near the end, but he, he got the dub and then I was able to hold him to second. And uh, I, was in, I was initially obviously very disappointed because I wanted to win. Um, and I didn't like where I was positioned in my last lap. Like it was good to be like sheltered a little bit and, and stuff, but I was kind of up the back of Stewie and I kind of wanted to get out and around and start pushing the pace a little bit earlier than, than from 150. But, you know, that's the way racing goes. It's tactical racing, it's championship racing, it's George Beamish's wet dream. So that type of racing uh, for me is something that like, and like I think Morgan can attest to this as well, is something that we don't usually get to do because a lot of the races we'll do, we can still race and it's still tactical in some ways, but it's always going to be fast and you kind of always know what you're going to get. But with championship racing, you have to kind of rely on instinct and, and really try and adapt to the situation and put yourself in the best possible place uh to, to win the race so i mean i tried everything to get to where i was and i just yeah tactically couldn't get a, get, get out of where i was um but i was happy with my clothes happy with my finish like yeah i just reflected on it a little bit um being far away like being so far away from where i was like um yeah not being able to walk having stress reaction having the osteos pubis stuff and then slowly building up running on the on the boost and still only running six days a week like but then the past couple of weeks, getting in really good training and, and putting myself in a really good place for that um, those championships. So getting second was fantastic for me, and now I can go into the races um, with a bit of hunger and try and you know get after it because I know there's a lot more uh, progression and growth hopefully in my uh, in my training in the next few uh, few months. I think I'm in a really, really good spot. So um, very very happy yeah. with that. Yeah, I think <laughs> having that perspective is definitely is what makes it probably feel really sweet is yeah there was some uncertainty because of the injuries but you did come out and you did prove how good you are and what form you're in and yeah as you said with this spot that you're in you're only going to get better you're only going to keep getting better because i mean compared to full training you're just you're just not quite there yet i mean you've been doing some amazing training as we said in the last six weeks especially but you still you just need to keep stacking those weeks so we're doing that those gains will come, and I think we need to give a big shout out to Jesse Hunt as well, who, yeah. who, uh, who had a big battle with down the final stretch. He got up for third. Oh, yeah. Oceania, who's had a massive season. I think he came into the season a three thirty six guy, and then I believe he's run three thirty three now in a third place in yeah, as you said, the most stacked Aussie national yeah. fifteen hundred field ever. And it was just crazy because then that meant Stewie ended up coming fourth, and Cam came fifth, and uh i think as it's it's weird how there's always surprises even though looking back on it, it doesn't seem it should be that much of a surprise but people weren't saying that like i didn't hear anyone say they thought adam spencer was going to win I, it mm. was a lot of talk very about overlooked. you he's very overlooked. stewie and cam um and i mean cam did great it, it's he's a, he's a, he's so young and it's a lot of pressure to put on someone that age he did great and then stewie is just there's always gonna be pressure on him just with you know, his style of racing, I think he knows he doesn't quite have the same finish as some of the other 15 guys. So there's always this pressure on him to go to the front and it just puts such a target on your back. Uh, so it was just like such a stack race. But Adam Spence, I mean, he ran 331 last year and he's coming off an, an amazing NCAA season where he came second, I think, in indoors. And he's just known for having a big kick. So he's he's sneaky, man. He was just, yeah. he was just biding his time, being patient back there. And then when he made his move, he was able to come around and just – yeah, capitalize on it and just slingshot around. And uh, yeah, great race from him, man. Got to give credit yeah, to shout him out and that. Mick, Mick Byrne. Byrne. I mean, I mean, the biggest winner this weekend was Wisconsin <laughs> across yeah, the men's 15, 5K. 5K, yeah. We, we did pretty well. We but, did, yeah. Uh, yeah, that 1500 was, man, it was, I was, it is like a weird feeling of nerves. I, I finally kind of understand how people feel at USA's, I think, because we've been, Australia doesn't tend to have such stacked races. The US, it's, the championships mean so much in terms of making a team. And uh, now that we have 
something that's approaching like similar, you finally understand like why those races are such a big deal. There's so much drama and it's so dramatic. And uh, our, our ones are not quite as cut and dry as the US system. So these results honestly make the selectors' jobs easier in some ways, but harder in others. I think Adam, and people, some people were surprised why Adam didn't get picked. And the reason was because there was a rule in the selection criteria that you needed to race one other, I think one other Australian tour event, which he didn't do, a rule which severely disadvantages those based in the US or yep. anywhere that's not Australia. I don't know. Or just yeah, in college or uh, international, yeah. Because he deserved to be picked after that. And then... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, he will... I, you, could, you shouldn't say like, oh, yeah, he will get picked, but he, he will get picked. I mean, like he's run the standard... He's a 331 guy. He's won the national championships, like, and he's also represented Australia um, internationally already. So he has international representation. Um, you know, he will get selected. And like the way the criteria follows is like, no one got selected in the 1500. But if you look at, okay, he won it. He had the standard. He didn't run a tour race, but he has a good excuse for that. He's in college. You know, he's racing in the NCAA. So, you know, he will get selected. Um, and I mean, he yeah. definitely deserves it after running that race. And it puts you in a good spot as well. I think it just shows how well you're coming on and how well you're bouncing back from injury. And if you knock off the standard, I don't see any way that you don't get selected after um, beating all the rest of those guys in that head-to-head. But then that third spot will be – it'll really depend on, I think, the results that can't happen in the in the coming months. Mm-hmm. There's going to so. be a lot of important races coming up through the season. So it'll be, it'll be exciting to follow as a fan, I guess, in some ways and very anxious as well because it's – it's tough the way that works, but yeah, that's just that's just the criteria they have, and that's the way the sport is for us. So, um, yeah, it'll be hopefully very exciting racing coming up in the next few months. Yeah, and I wanted to ask one thing that you said that was interesting after the heats was that you forgot like a little bit how much racing hurts, mm. which has happened to me like so many times. Every time I come back from an injury, I have a similar feeling when you've just been away from it for so long. Was did you really feel a big difference between the heat and the final in terms of uh, you were much more prepared for the final or was, yeah, did it help? It, the final felt easier than the heat, just off yeah, feeling. Interesting. Like it just yeah. felt easier off, easier than, I think for me, the heat felt hard because it was the nerves. I kind of let it from start to finish. It felt more of like a rep. It didn't feel like a race. Whereas this final felt like a race. And then I started to kind of feel like I was, you know, it's, it, things were starting to come back, you know, a little bit. Um, so now it actually makes you really excited to race more. So, hope, you know, in the next few few uh, meets and races, that that will be nice to kind of get that racing fitness back. Um, and that was exciting. And I was very, honestly, with that, the amount of talent and the amount of tactics that are involved in championship racing, I was very, even though I was a bit block, boxed in, I was very happy with how I handled um, that race personally. Um, yeah. You know, maybe obviously wanted to maybe go a little bit earlier with, with Adam, but either way, like I think um, after being away from 10 months, like you'd know more like you just lose a little bit of maybe that feeling or just the the way you you know you, your body's learned how to race mentally and physically so yeah. well I, I even i i've raced more recently than you and i felt a very similar feeling and that was because i haven't been in a race that was such a pure championship race in so long my two indoor races were just all out efforts essentially and um most of my races last year Really, all of them were all-out effort. I mean, the World Champs heats was not an all-out effort, but it was like, I don't know, it just got dropped really bad. <laughs> so it's not like I was in it. In terms of being in it for a championship race, wow, it, it had been so long for me. So I had a similar – I didn't feel – I felt good about it, but, it, yeah, there was a slight like, oof, we're doing this again, and it's and it's uh, it's and it's been a minute. So when I went into my race, I think we initially were positioned really similar because um, you you were doing a really good job at being on the shoulder of whoever was leading. I was trying to do that same thing. Uh, our 5K went out pretty slow. I think it was – well, I wasn't paying attention to splits, but I could tell that it was slow because I felt pretty good. I think it was like 70-second laps and stuff. And then there was, a, there was a few people putting in like moves to the front. But, yeah, because it was so slow, there was just like so much anticipation building and there was a lot of – movement in the pack and so i really wanted to try just be on the outside shoulder of the leader to be ahead of it and even even i was trying to protect protect that position really well i still a few people still did like end up going around me but luckily i didn't get shuffled back too far but 
man, once it got going, like it, it was one of those races for me where 63s is, is uh, like essentially my, I think 63s is my PB race pace. So you would think that it, it's like pretty doable, but because we've been running all these 70s, when we started running 63s with like five or four laps to go, I think it was Reyna that went to the front and increased the pace. It felt so hard. And then it was like, oh shit, okay, <laughs> this is the racing going. And there's still so many people there. So yeah. I, I felt good, but um, it was just like, it, it was getting tough, you know, it was getting tough where up to the, it was like, I was having thoughts earlier the race when it was slow, where I was just thinking to myself, wow, I feel really good right now. Like I would just, I'll just sit right here until to the last lap and then I'll, I'll make my move. That'd be pretty cool. Obviously it wasn't going to play out like that. It was going to be a bit more challenging, but uh, I was able to on the belt on the second to last lap move up to a pretty good spot on the shoulder of Jack, right where I wanted to be. I was, it was, right where I wanted to be going into the last lap. And then with uh, 300 to go is when I made my move, which is something that I've done a lot of times before. It felt, felt familiar. It felt good. Uh, and what I kind of tried to do is like kick, but save a little bit because for the final stretch, because I just kind of knew that unless I was like feeling really, really good, like everyone was just going to be following me, you know, like it's, mm. Yeah. In one of those types of races, you're not just going to drop everyone. Like everyone's going to be following you. So if you're leading from the front, you're kind of like setting yourself up a bit. But I felt good doing it. It felt good just to like unleash after all these laps of waiting. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then with 100 to go, I kind of like revved it up a little bit more and feeling good, running for home. And this is where... I kind of got to defend my, I don't know if I got to defend myself a bit, but like I watched the video back and it's, it's pretty brutal. I mean, to be honest, like after the race, I was not super, super disappointed. I was still pretty happy because I'm like, yeah, I don't think I would have tried to do anything different, but I got pipped right at the line. And that, I think that always sucks. Like no matter that, that's always going to suck and sting a little bit. But what ended up happening, I think was I, just misjudge my kick a little bit. I think I was a little bit nervous and I went a bit too hard with hundred to go because that last 50 meters, I really started tying up in a way that I've never really tied up before. And I was just like full, I don't know, lactic or whatever, just gassed. And I, I actually knew that Ramsden was coming on my inside. Like I knew I could, I could feel it. Like I could feel I the instinct. Yeah. Yeah, well, I didn't know that it was Ramson, but I knew, you knew someone, was there. someone was coming on my inside and there was nothing I could do about it. I was just like, get to the line, get to the line. And like, I even had the thought I wanted to dive. I wanted to try to dive, but I was like, I didn't even have like the momentum to do that. Like I wasn't like moving forwards, like fast enough where, I don't know, it just, it just wasn't on the cards for whatever reason. So I don't think I knew that I got beaten until I saw Ramson, uh, like celebrating but i definitely didn't think that i won like i wasn't celebrating i know i so that my there's a photos there's photos of my family i don't know if you've seen them morgan but where we were celebrating because we thought you won we actually didn't see ramson from the angle we were at so really? we thought that you won um i don't so know if you've brutal. seen the photos but there's a, a great photo of my dad that tom wang will hopefully uh i'll send to him so he can put it in uh so you can see uh for the podcast but there's a great photo and it's just my dad going like this mm. like in the air um and because we all thought that you got it um and then i looked at the board i was like oh shit because i saw, saw ramson start to celebrate and then i was like oh he's got he's got on the inside and he's he's picked yeah. in so yeah so we, we actually did we didn't see ramson on that angle we were in a, it's like the weather we were positioned in the hundred we thought oh morgan's got it and then uh yeah we did we didn't see him come through on the inside sneaky how how devastating and how embarrassing to get past on the inside to 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 lose to him he couldn't George have Beamish, George Beamish, uh, <laughs> he couldn't have done it any other way at all i think he would have had to go too far to go on the outside and like the annoying thing is if you look at the replay i mean i didn't even like move out that wide like i was still in lane one but somehow he was still skinny enough like i wasn't on the there. rail obviously i wasn't right on the rail i was like on the outside yeah. of lane one and he just he just slid it on slipped in right through there and got me in but he was just coming with so much more momentum and I was tying up. And uh, so, I mean, as I said, I don't think in terms of like racing, I don't think there's anything I would have 
done differently. Like I don't, I don't regret the moves. I just wish that I had timed it a, a slightly a little bit better. And going back to the drawing board, I'm more just like, well, I just need to get a bit stronger so I can like sustain that kick better as well. And because I think like I should be able to, I would like I would hope to be able to close like a bit faster than that going forward. So I think I just just need to get a bit better still. Yeah, That's it's only April. Got yeah. got a lot of time to work on that kick with George Beamish and uh, Yard. So. Yeah. But it was and it Mario. was uh, it was a cra- it was a big shake up at the end of the race in the five k as well, similar to the fifteen, where some some heavy hitters like ended up going back a bit, and then some Jack- others came Jackson through. Jackson Sharp, man, yeah, Jackson Sharp, Jackson Wisconsin, Sharp for Wisconsin, Big Burn, Big <laughs> Burn, <laughs> Big Burn was the biggest wow. Speed suit. Yeah, for real, it was awesome. And then fourth place was an athlete. I think his name was Toby Gillen. I should probably yes. double check that. He uh, and, he's a shout out to him because he's coached by one of my parents' friends, uh, Jill. Well, he Bolts. goes to Ole Miss, so maybe yeah. I don't. Oh know well, he's yeah, coached he, he, he was coached. Well. He, he, he was, was coached. coached. Sorry, sorry. He was yeah. coached by by Jill Bolts um, here in Australia, and then he's now gone to Ole Miss and he's been running well in the US. So I should yeah. shout that out. Sorry, yeah, you're right because he was wearing he's wearing his Ole Miss kit, wasn't he? Yeah, I had such a good conversation with him after the race. <laughs> I, I said, "Nice, oh, what's up, Ole Miss?" And he said, he just looked at me and went, "Cinta." <laughs> I was like, yeah. Since, uh, he should it, he should have said that and then started talking fluent Italian. That would have been a huge flex. <laughs> I would have been very confused if that's how that played out. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> we all talk Italian, yeah. uh, Old Miss. Yeah, but yeah, it was just a big barn burner at the end of of that five k. And oh, I was feeling it after the race as well. Like I just haven't, yeah, closed the race hard in like so long. So it was just. So I was just so dead. I was so cooked after it. But what was the last lap? Do you know? I don't. Even, I don't even know. I don't think it was like. Quick. Yeah, but I don't think it was like running quick. That crazy. I don't know. I haven't actually checked yeah. the uh, the splits, but it was just yeah. It was a good race, and I think for me coming second, it puts me in. I mean, it's it's good. It's not as good as coming first, obviously, but it still puts you in a good position in terms of selection, a second place at nationals, and overall. To be honest, I was just like I was thinking about it even before the race. I was just so happy to be back in Australia racing because it was kind of mind blowing that the last time I had raced nationals was 2018, six years previous, and it doesn't feel like that long, man. Time time has been flying, but uh, I mean, when I was growing up racing Australian nationals, it's it's just always been like such a big deal for me and always something I've looked forward to. And then looking up to the senior nationals, it's just something that I've always loved watching and seeing like my people that I looked up to, like Ben St. Lawrence competing in it and winning it. It's just like what I want to be doing. It's like how I envisioned my pro career going is like being in these races and being competitive and doing well in them. So just to be able to be part of it was amazing. And yeah, the vibe out there was really cool. I would love, uh, It'd be funny taking, say, an American to, to those types of races because they're so chill. Like it's it's such a chill affair compared and to. We took Ritz. The, yeah, the, the we, did take, yeah, we, did, we take did take an American. Yeah, we did take an American. He's like, wow, this is this is this is so nice and chill. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> it's weird. It's like it's like really good racing. And to be fair, Saturday Sunday had really big crowds, and but it's just it's just a little bit more like. Uh, i don't know social vibe i don't know how to describe it but it's, it's a really good vibe and just good vibes yeah feels good to be able to come back and see so many people um, saw some coffee uh, coffee shirt coffee club shirts out there yeah Last yes place. definitely getting some love for the coffee club getting out there it was amazing the club, so, so thank you, everyone. To you guys yeah yeah that was that was so Pretty cool sweet. as always so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm i'm very happy that we uh that we did it the only thing i would change is um i was like by the time i got to race day i was just so ready to be done with my race because i'd been there for two weeks yeah you were there for a while yeah and ollie had already done his race he was finished i mean your first race i think in my race i think when your first race was was like a good amount of time because that was i think more like 10 days probably you were there for but by the time i got to my race i was just like there was so much anticipation i think it was making me like pretty nervous like the day before the race and stuff which is 
which I mean, it makes sense for a race like this, but there was just so much anticipation. I was just so ready to be done with it. So maybe yeah. I would come back a little bit later because you just, yeah, you normally don't go to like where you're racing so long before it. So that was kind of weird, but Adelaide treated us so well. We have to give a shout out to everyone who looked after us there. Um, Team Tempo, Adam Diddick, Matt yeah. Clark, the rest of the gang. You guys were so welcoming. So thank you very much for that. Uh, it was it was a very, very good mini training camp or race yeah. camp, whatever you want to call it. It was a good it, break, so. good break from, uh, from Boulder, and now we can come back and get back into it, head yeah, down, bums to, up. Uh, yeah, are you excited to get yeah. back there? Uh, I'm excited to move into my new place, <laughs> but that's also going to be stressful in its own way, I guess. Um, but I'm excited to see Gus. I'm excited to, to yeah, just get back in the routine. I think like what you said, Morgan, about us being there for 10 days, 10 to like two weeks or whatever is that you kind of like you're, you're still kind of out of your routine even if you try and set a routine so like once you get back into boulder and you get back into kind of like our usual schedule it, it definitely makes like it feels good to be able to like chip it away you know so i'm looking mm-hmm. forward to that as well um yeah but uh, i think hopefully the weather's going to be good i haven't have you checked because i heard there was those massive winds and yeah, stuff like that. Nice it's been really warm there, super warm. Really? I think it's getting cold again for this weekend or something like that. But I think generally it's it's very warm there, so that should be nice. Oh, nice! Well, enjoy it. Put get the shorts out. Yeah, get the shorts and, uh, out. Sp- speaking of the Boulder crew, big shout out to Helen O'Beary getting it done in Boston for us. That was this morning. She's uh, very impressive, isn't she? So out of the four marathons she's done, she's won three of them, and they're all majors. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Back to back too. I, I wonder how many back to back Boston marathon champions are there. I think oof, in the, in, there was a I'm lot sure of tweets about too. this. Citrus Mag was tweeting all these, all these. Oh, stats they would have all the stats. Citrus Mag so would be all over the stats. I should know. I forgot them though. What does that tell you about those stats? It's like you read them and they're you're like, wow, that's impressive, <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then you just forget. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Though. So, I mean, Helen, yeah. Hopefully, she gets selected for the Kenyan team because uh, she's there's looking no like a gold medalist. There's, there's yeah. no way she no gets selected. Yeah. I shouldn't say that. I don't want to put the put a curse out. Put there. the jinx in it, but no. Nah. It would be really, really, Very really, really silly if she didn't get selected. Yeah. Very excited um, for Helen, and looking forward to seeing her back in Boulder as well. Yeah. Yeah. Another, another gold medal around her neck. Yeah. Another, another cash uh, to check. Take no, to the bank. Another cash to check. Yeah. Take to the bank. <laughs> Should be rocking up to practice in a cyber truck with massive headphones on and a gold chain, just cruising through. That'd be sick. That'd be yeah, so cool. Just, yeah, it'd be pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'm really happy that we got to get this little recap out. Is there anything else? Any other takeaways from this trip, Ollie? Before we close this one out? Um, no, I think honestly, I'm very proud of both of us. I think, I think you've you've. I mean, I've always been proud of you, Morgs. Um, and I think, particularly with your adversity, it was fun, funny because my mom, my parents were very emotional, very stressed just because of the injury and how much pressure was on kind of these championships to, to come out and perform. And your mom and my mom had a really good chat and they're both similar in some ways. And like, yeah, your, your mother kind of said, look, like I've been there through Morgan, through his hardships, through his injuries. And when he comes back, you're always just so nervous on the anticipation or the, just the you know, inability to control what's going on because it's your son, you know, and you want them to do the best they can and th- the pressures of the sport can get to them or get to the situation. But it was great to see that little moment between our folks, but I'm very proud of where we, we, we went, we executed. And the nice thing is I think we're going to take a lot away from this championships uh, moving forward. And um, yeah, so it's pretty exciting, honestly. Amen, brother. Amen. Yeah. Well, that's it from us for now. Yep. Checking out. See you back in Boulder. See you back in Boulder. And that's it from us today. Apologies that it was a bit of a shorter episode, but I hope that you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. That's episode 133 of the Coffee Club Podcast. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening, and we look forward to seeing you guys next week. See ya.